Good evening. I wrap Stan, and here we are with your uh, financial market wrap up. And this wrap up is for the evening of Tuesday, the 27th of June, 2020, uh, 2023. I almost said 2027 there. It's the 27th of June. So let's talk a little bit about where we're at and everything. You know, today, early in the day, we had durable goods orders. Boom, they explode to the upside. Home sales, new home sales, boom explode to the upside. Consumer confidence, boom, to the upside. We had then, uh, I think it was the Richmond Fed manufacturing area. Mm, not so good, not so good, but not as bad as the last report. That's about all that you could say. So we know that industry's the problem. We know that uh, the money is still being spent by the consumer on the service industry and things they like. The surprise today, absolutely two surprises, actually three. Consumer confidence, much stronger than anybody guessed. I don't see one estimate near the, how good it came out. Home sales soaring to up 12% or so and durable goods jumping rather dramatically. So the big ticket items are still being bought. Fascinating. It carried the markets up. You're off nine points tonight, but you were up at the 419 area in the S&P. You're still up pretty good uh, overall holding in these markets. Was this the last hurrah? Is this the beginning of another move? Well, we're gonna take a look right now and get a feel. On the energy markets, you're back down, Joe. You know who Joe is, that guy that uh, we all know. What do we call him? Uh, oh, the Biden boy, President Joe Biden. We're down to $68 in crude, Joe. Are you buying anything? <laughs> you know, I, I laugh at it. I, I, he's probably waiting for 50. Um, as you can see in the bonds and notes, just sort of flat right here. So as we come to the S&P for the week, and we're already in Wednesday trade, you're up about a half a percentage point. Okay. The market had been coming up, a bit of a setback, and you still have the pattern of higher lows, higher highs. So what I don't want to see, if you want to be bullish, is taking out 30, I'm sorry, 43, 68, 50. That would be a real problem for me. That would create lower highs, lower lows, and be a big negative. The good news is the market has support well in front of it at the 18-day average of closes. And in the past, that's been a number that you could hang your hat on. It's been a zone of good support. Where's the resistance? All the way up here at the 4480 level, the upper Bollinger Band. And momentum, which had been coming down, is going sort of flat right here. So we'll see what it does. At least it's not going down anymore. We'll see if it turns. In the NASDAQ, we had lost the bullish embedded reading. We went to the Bollinger Band, I'm sorry, to the 18-day average. That was the objective, and it's sort of stuck here. It's not picking up. I'm a little bothered by that because I would have liked to have seen which part of the market's going to take the leadership. And in the past, it's been the NASDAQ. It doesn't look like it wants to do it. The Dow is just back and forth. I've changed the numbers here to green. I don't like them. I'm probably gonna go back to my blue numbers, so be ready for me to do that. Just looking at them, and I feel like it's Christmas the whole time I'm talking. Um, higher high, lower low, just sort of hanging in here at that average, not a real trend to hang your hat on, and the Russell's still bearish. You can see how the market came down. Challenge, see the gray line? That's the 200-day average, the 100, went back to the 18. As this is all going on, look at the black dashed lines. Those are your Bollinger Bands. They're wrapping around the market like that. They're saying, hey, baby, I'm going to put my arms around you. And as that happens, you generally take volatility out of the market. So don't be surprised if you see things quiet down a little bit right now. You talk about volatility out of the market. I don't recall bonds this quiet. Just take a look. It's just hanging at the 18-day average. And as it's done it, it has forced the Bollinger Bands narrowing in. Market, very difficult to trade anything like that. Five-year notes still in the bear camp, but oversold. I don't think you're going to attract new money one way or the other. And while the dollar rally the past two couple of days has been nice, it keeps getting back to the 100-day average in the 18 and failing each time there. But we're not getting fresh sell signals just yet. I want to be a bear in the dollar, but not when you're in an oversold market that lost the embedded reading. It means it's got more work to do before you want to, I think, deploy new money. When you look at the euro currency, it's the flip-flop. 40% of the dollar index is made up of the euro. 
Therefore, when it loses its bearish reading, this often will lose its bullish reading. And that's what I think is going on. Let me come back to that for just a second, too. I want you to, though, take a look what's, what you're on the verge of doing. You're on the verge of getting the 18 over the 100. The green is the 100-day average. That'd be a bullish crossover if that takes place. And then you'd have the 200. You'd have under right above that the 100 and above that the 18. Traders look at that that are moving average boys and they'll say, oh, I like that. In the British pound, you have a market that lost its bullish reading. I'm looking for it to go back to the 18-day average now before it gets back up there. So let's see if that occurs. In Bitcoin, you have a market that's gotten up and it's trying to do what we call embed, which means get the red and the green numbers right now going sideways over 80 for several days. And that adds fuel to the fire. People say it's overbought. No, no, no. That'll be locking in the bullishness and trying to kick the market to higher levels. So let's see if it accomplishes that first. Then we take a look at Brent uh, August versus WTI August. You can see the markets have fallen back to the 18-day average. They're trying to debate now, what do they do next when they grow up? And I can tell you, right now they're under pressure. Oil is a bearish event right now, not a bullish event. Economy slowing down less demand, a lot more output. Iran's output is very large. I think Russia's is out of control. We have the Saudis trying to one-handed commit and say, all right, for July, they're going to cut a million barrels a day, but how long are they willing to do that? And if the whole game comes down and you get away from here, you could be at 65 before you know what's going on, which would take this down to about the 60 level. So you've got to pay attention to that. The pressures are not bullish right now. They're bearish on these markets. In gasoline, no, I'm not friendly right now. Now, normally I would be going into July 4th, but this market's had its nice rally. It did enough where I think you've got a problem at this point. Uh, yes, I expect record amount of driving for the July 4th holiday. In fact, I'll be doing some. Um, but I think that the cars get better mileage. I think the market is looking as to where you're at right now. And I don't think that you have a shortage anywhere. And that's keeping prices, if you will, under control. Nat gas, think of a heat event. You're there. Hear what I'm telling you. You're there. Is it going to work? Are you embedding? Now, let's follow this. If we step back, we can't count today because we don't know how the market's going to finish. But Tuesday's event, both numbers were over 80. Both were over 80 the day before and the day before. So unless the red line closes under 79, I think the traders are going to start buying, believe it or not, against the resistance of 276.20. Why? Because the big heat event that's been in Texas is moving into the Midwest right now. So we're supposed to get this over the next five days, and we're talking very hot weather. Big demand's going to happen for the air conditioners and the like, and if that happens, you'll get support from it. I'm not a weatherman. Can the weather change? It can. I'm telling you what's out there. And they're talking possibly record-breaking that's going to come into the Chicago area and other areas. So we're about to get hot, maybe. You know how weather is, maybe. But you are seeing it spread across the south. That's happening. Upper Midwest, definitely happening. And then after this moves past us, they're also talking that you might build another dome in Texas. It could get worse. So while they're getting a small reprieve as this moves on, be careful. It may not stay that way. So again, I want to remind you, if you like the type of reports that I do, the special reports, it's all about Lucid today. How do you get it? You go to our website. You go to research, it's there. We have an icon if you move your cursor up here. It will go off our website on Thursday. My reports are meant for now, not for a year from now. That's not what they're about. So please take a look at it. I'm Ira Epstein. I'll see you first thing in the morning.